this is the home page. Uh, it shows you that you can look at the herd results, the distribution. In other words, how is the herd compared to the national average? And the progress, how are you doing with the different samples <coughs> that you have taken at different times? Have you, are you improving? And if here, for example, it gives you the net, net merit, uh, the net merit that is on that herd, and the net merit that is the national a, uh, average. So it will tell you how you're doing on, on each trait. Uh, another thing that you can do with this test, with a, with a website, for example, this is how, at the beginning, how the results come out, okay? Let's say that you are judging by next mer uh, net merit. So you can put it in a descendant way from the top to the bottom, okay? And you can lock it. In other words, <clears throat> you leave it as a descendant way, and then you can put a filter on any other trait. In other words, let's say you want the best net merit and the best milk producers. Those are the ones that you want to keep. So you can put a, put a net merit descendant and filter by milk. So it will give you automatically the top. That way you know which ones are the top that you want to keep or which ones you want to get rid of. That's the way you can tell. That is the best way to use the tool. Uh, do it the way you want to, what you're looking for. What is the result you're looking for? You can do all the traits at the same time, how they're standard. Uh, so each individual animal is showing how it's doing on the different traits. To me, it doesn't tell you a whole lot if you do one individual because you want to compare the individual to the rest of the herd or the rest of uh, the national average. This is, for example, a net merit. The, the, the curve that you see is the national average. <coughs> and this is the result for the herd. So you see that this herd is on the better side, on the higher side of net merit. So this is a very good herd. We have some that are here at the bottom or all over the place. So, and also when you click on the website, it will tell you the number of animals you have in each, in each number, in each category. This is giving you the range of the net merit, each one of those numbers. Uh, this is the progress, the graph of the progress. The, uh, throughout the time that you have submitted several samples, how well you're doing on your, in this case they did it again for net merit. And uh, so if you're improving or not, as you can tell, here is the, the curve of this particular samples. They were improving and then it, it goes, it plateau a little bit. So you have to continue and see how your progress is improving, your, your herd's improving or not. Uh, what is it uh, it does for you? You know, the, the dairyman wants to know, well, what, how do I make my money on this? Uh, first of all, you can correct your parent averages. We were talking about earlier that you, and, and you have more experience even knowing that uh, some of the some of the paternity is not right. In other words, you you get range usually an average of 15 to 20 percent that you have the right bull with the right calf, or the right uh, heifer or cow. So uh, identify the paternity correctly. But uh, we find that about 15 to 20 percent of them are wrong. Uh, we were talking earlier that I have one that it was over in the 80s, 80% 80 wrong. You would think that uh, if, how could it be 80%? It should be at least 50-50, maybe, you know, but no, this was a constant mistake that we were doing. They weren't writing down the thing. That, uh, first of all, the maternity, the guy would go in the morning and there were three caps and, well, I think that was a cow. And, and so on, nominated the, which one they belong to, just uh, at random. Uh, we had another one that the guy, uh, not, I don't know want to say anything wrong about inseminators, but uh, the guy would go inseminate and then go to his office and, and just fill out 
by the by the straws that he had left. So by the nap number. Anyway, so it sure it shows a lot of the mistakes. But hey, this blame to go all around at this thing because mistakes are made all the time. According to this, you know, you can get very well informed of what is the decision you want to make, what you want to keep, in other words. But you have to use that information. Yes, sir? The, the IPI, I, I guess I didn't see it in, on these sheets. You, do, you can generate that number. In, in that is a, your KPI. Okay. Very good. What if the sire is unknown? How does that affect the, the total? It affects because uh, when you're typing, in other words, you have your PTAs, these numbers that you see here, you're adding not only the genomic value of the calf that you're testing, but you're adding the value that is bringing from the parents. Parent average. Yeah. So they do have a value. And you, the ones that you give us is added to it. Okay, if you don't, it's a known parent, the value will be less because you're not adding the parent. Yes, it gives you less value. So, so, so the, those numbers will be lowered. Just it will be much lower. That is correct. That is correct. Uh, this is one of the stri strategies that you are very familiar with. You know, they retain the top, uh, that 75%, and they call the 25% the in order to improve. Now, uh, this is an example of uh, 1,000 heifers, and you retain, say, 150. What you're adding really, uh, I'll spare you all the, the numbers and all this, how we calculated with the yield for a lifetime, but it's about $76 per cow that you're adding. When you're, when you're doing only this type of elimination, when you're keeping 75%. 76 per lifetime? <coughs> per lifetime. Just in this, yes. That's not counting the two thousand dollars for not raising them. In dollar, this is only on the on the animal itself. But if you count the ones the twenty two hundred and fifty that you're not raising, it's about two hundred two thousand dollars around two thousand dollars per per calf. No, but you're not getting that. That you're saving. That you're not raising. So that's not added to it. Am I answering your question? Well, you're still going to get some for that animal, so it's not yes. two thousand dollars. Yes. So. Yes. On the on the this is what you're saving on the ones you're keeping. You know, you're making seventy six dollars more, just in the fact of keeping them. Uh, and these are what. Uh, the rearing cost and so forth, how much minus the cost of, of uh, testing, you're still making money. Uh, this is the conventional, the, how do you decide to use six semen and so forth. This is what we see the most. Uh, in this case, we have an embryo transplant we consider in the top, that some people do. And we use the six semen on the rest and uh, conventional semen and beef to get rid of the, the ones that you don't want to keep. Uh, we are moving a little bit away from this part of beef semen only on calculating cost, only because a lot of people are not doing it anymore. Or some of the times you're talking about jerseys that they don't have much value, unfortunately. You cannot tell this, you know, do that part. And Holston, yes, <clears throat> there's still the value is holding. You can sell it when you cross it. Uh, this is what you get: a premium beef calf when you cross it. Uh, you have the best females, and you don't brace unwanted uh, ever. This is what uh, we were talking about: the inbreeding. Uh, that's one of the traits, of course, that we are giving you the results for inbreeding. So for every 1% increase on inbreeding, it's about from $22 <coughs> to $24 less 
and profit that you're having per cap, per, per animal. Lifetime. Lifetime, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. So that is the impact of the embryo. Uh, so to maximize, sh uh, for short term, to get your money back, sell the, the heifers, call the heifers and sell them. Long term is your improvement of the herd as you go by and keep selecting the best and the best. Uh, and that improves your pro uh, profitability. Uh, this is one of the examples of a dairy that in Ohio, one of the customers. It's only 1,500 uh, cow, fairly good size. <laughs> and uh, the whole thing, and uh, expensive uh, feed and so forth. And uh, they've been uh, testing for about three years. His emphasis is in inbreeding. That's uh, one of the things you know, he's most fearful of. He has had a lot of, uh, he's heard, has a lot of incidents of inbreeding very high percent. So also, he, uh, somatic cells count, or score in this case. Uh, yeah, because what we give you the results, by the way, is somatic cell score. It's a formula. It's not somatic cell count, OK? Uh, a lot of times when the customer is reading the sheet and sees somatic cells, he thinks it's the count. It's not. It's the score that helps you compare. That's the only. Uh, purpose of the, of the score, just for comparison. Uh, he tested uh, animals uh, less than a week old and uh, sent us tissue sample. They went to their lab and uh, we did prime and at the beginning, but when we came up with a select test, he uh, started doing select. Uh, this are about since January uh, 14, we have tested about 646 of the heifers. Okay, and he has divided in two groups, one for sex semen and the other one for beef semen, as we were talking about, the, the ones that are not as good, the, those are the ones that he's crossing with beef semen. And uh, he's replacing about 33%. So it's about 33% that he's using the uh, beef semen. Uh, on, he uh, top end correct the name applied using sex semen, as we said. And the middle group is sex semen and conventional semen. He goes back and forth. So this is a cow protocol that he uses. Uh, so in the Ohio market, at the crossbred, when you put the, uh, the beef semen, it's about a $100 premium when for the crossbred which I forgot to mention, I think, we do have a crossbred test also. Uh, a lot of people tell us, how can you do crossbred? Uh, that is based on a pool that we compare all the uh, crossbred results that we get on the genomic test. We compare it to a pool of crossbreds that we have had throughout the years. So that's a way we compare how good is the, the crossbred or not. So it's not uh, a deck, like the other test to measure PTA and so forth. Uh, in this case, uh, the benefit of, of the crossbreds and uh, improved protein and fertility, and, the, uh, and we do also BBB testing. This is another case on uh, this particular one is out of state. We did about 8,000 cows, and uh, they have a some crossbred on this one. That, uh, as a matter of fact, he didn't have enough information for us to tell which ones were the crossbred. So it took us quite a while to to pull them out. Anyway, he it's a commercial dairy, regular sells milk and sells the call animals for for meat. Uh, he is expanding, so he's using sex semen in the, uh, the and also he was purchasing cows. So he didn't know what he was getting, in other words. And that's one of the reasons he wanted us to test what it is that I'm getting. I don't know where to put them. So that's what the, one of the big reasons that he wanted to test. 
So we test all the heifers. <clears throat> Sorry. Uh, he had about 31% of conflicts on parents. Uh, the parentage, 31% uh, error. Uh, the average net merit that we had in this herd was 353, okay? Out of the 5, 000, almost 6,000 heifers that we genotyped. After uh, we put in, uh, in other words, called the bottom, we raised the, his uh, net merit to 440 from 373. So right there, he's <coughs> improving his, his uh, I mean, his uh, profit.